say. Mm -hmm. I bought a little ring light I can put on if I need to. I found mm. the very cheapest one I could. <laughs> it's like a barrette. <laughs> so at the top. It has batteries, like double A batteries. I've been very nice. stubborn about coming into the Zoom age. <laughs> <laughs> I'll only buy candlelight. <laughs> I find sometimes like when I was buying a little LED display base for my Selenite castle that uh like it was really hard to find one that could be AC powered. I'm like, no, I don't want battery power. I don't want to worry about batteries. Uh, I want to yeah. plug it in. They do make things that like there's a adapter, there's a wall ward on one end and like a big AC vent for a double oh, battery yeah. on the other. Mm. I did I find some, but it was just they were definitely the rarity. Most LED display bases you can buy are battery powered. Mine is yeah. actually dual. It can be either. Mm. And what's even stranger is it has you can put double A batteries in it. But it also it has in it a rechargeable battery. Oh, so like okay. uh, when I was plugged in, and I, I actually didn't know that when I bought it. I didn't read. It's in the description. But I didn't read it. And uh, it's kind of a bummer because I usually activate everything with Alexa. But now I can't do that. because <laughs> so I go, Alexa, turn off lights. That stays on because <laughs> it's got its internal battery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, have, I actually have to use the remote from bed to turn that one light off. Let's see if I can find that. Alexa, shut the fucking lights off. <laughs> yeah, for, for my first guy, I was so baffled because I would like unplug it and it would stay on. I'm like, how is this happening? Demons. Ghost light. Demon and I looked light. it back up and I was like, oh, it's because I'm an idiot. And it says right there in the description, rechargeable, blah, 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 battery. And I was like, oh, I just paid attention to the AC part of it because that's what I cared about. You've been cool. <laughs> Adapted with fake double A. Yeah, now we're talking. Huh. That's ah. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's like uh, back in the day when we had tape decks and you would put the fake, <laughs> the fake tape in so you could play your iPod. Yeah, <laughs> that's what my first. Oh, I wonder if there's first, a name uh, for that sort of phenomenon. My first car adapters were that. The yeah. deck car adapters so I could hook my iPod up to it. Yeah, mine until very recently was that. <laughs> <laughs> My current car is the first car I've had that did not have a cassette player in it. Mm. Nice. I don't, I don't think mine does. Yeah. But neither is Bluetooth. So it's right <laughs> in the middle of I think like, I get, like, a I, CD adapter. I don't know. <laughs> yesterday, I filled my gas tank for the first time in 2021. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I filled ours. We uh, did it during the house. snow. During the snow, because like, oh, no. well, almost on empty, but still just in case oh, one no. of our, we did it right before. Our phones. Yeah, right oh, before God. it got really bad, just in case so then, we didn't die. Yeah, yeah couldn't yeah. get the car back up the hill. So oh, no. sat, sat at the base of the hill, charging our phones for a little while. Watched oh, our God. watch which of our neighbors would give us eye contact and which would not. Spoiler <laughs> <laughs> yeah. alert: none. None. <laughs> but you were offering <laughs> yeah. eye contact to everyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually what one lady did invite us in her house and she was like bringing in several other people she's our good neighbor but everyone else oh. said, fuck off <laughs> <laughs> fuck you fuck you fuck, fuck you you're fuck cool you. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> i've decided to become the neighborhood witch <laughs> <laughs> was it a decision <laughs> calling <laughs> If you don't know who in your neighborhood is the neighborhood witch, it's then you. that means. Yeah. It's either me or it's a, that or Mark. Mark yeah, I'm pretty, pretty started as a witch, so. Yeah. Um, let's see. Speaking of. Yeah, what what happened? I know um, Gary has blood on him. Yeah, Gary's Gary's last uh, the, the last thing we ended on was Gary. Yeah, there was a loud a loud bang, uh, and then Gary came in the uh, front door of the roadhouse and was covered in blood. Ah. And I was like, we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, should I pick any? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Pick pick, pick our... a thingy. What's it? I need to do Doodles. something. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more. I, I have so little XP, it's embarrassing. <laughs> going to leave mine as gotta, they are. Got to max out Hyacinth. Min, max, min, max. Max, 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 max. 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 <laughs> uh, mm. 
Yeah, forget this min-maxing crap. I want a max-max. <laughs> yeah. I guess that... Uh, I'm not sure somebody still got it. I'm always bummed in game. I mean, this is every game, but it's always a little bit of a bummer to me. It's like, there's not enough skill points for me to get everything, even if I finish the game. I want Constantly. everything. I want to max I mean, out every stat. That's how I am in grad school. <laughs> What do you mean I have to choose one thing to study? I'm gonna do all the things. I came here because I was interested in things. Like, <laughs> With oh. no limit on things. <laughs> uh, I guess that'll do. Are we still on the run? Oh, I see. I, see. I just I just removed on the run because you're you're all legit again. <laughs> on the right side of We've the gone straight. Okay, what what skills do I have? I still have my sibling. Oh yeah, what? Who am I? <laughs> What's I can, going on? Oh, and I can pass myself off as somebody, <laughs> and I have negative sensitivity, which kind of mm. makes sense. For <laughs> that <laughs> does. Insensitive monster. I, it, I assume it is because Hyacinth interprets the supernatural as the natural. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't, just doesn't doesn't pick up on it because no. she's so in tune with it. Oh, the painting is talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't remember them doing that, but okay. Oh. <laughs> and she's and it's probably also in her previous career with what was it, Sam Blackstone? She's probably seen enough things that yeah. Yeah, like whatever mental divisions <laughs> there are between this is sometimes one, this dogs is just explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that kind of the middle level kind of demon. <laughs> A little tricky to get out. <laughs> yeah. um, cool. So uh, let's see. We have uh, sharing wisdom with a young person, sharing memory of a late family member. We should authority. spend the whole episode getting Rue's coat fixed. <laughs> <laughs> coat adventure. Coat adventure. Coat adventure. Coat episode. <laughs> um, sweet. So uh, y'all are there in the tavern you were you were there for some reason you were getting the book that's right yeah the uh the mystery the book of selfies and stuff the mystery of the deep what was it called the oh, the crab people of selfies crab people uh, something's of the deep history of the deep the history, history of the deep of the deep <laughs> uh and you uh sufficiently uh horn swoggled uh Hera, I think it was, who was keeping tavern. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, no, she was, was upset with us. It was, it was Sandy, because she is the one who is uh, Alvin's niece, and Alvin is currently in the Hooshka. Alvin sucks. Alvin sucks. sucks. Or Mar Marvin, and it's, it's Marvin and George. Uh, so her father, Marvin, and uh, George Cotswallop, the store owner, were picked up by um, uh, Deputy Duncan and taken to Brindlewood for safekeeping Gary. Uh, but you are now presented with uh, Gary in, uh, in a lovely shade of red uh, saying, we are in trouble. What do you do? I'm going to get my window back. So Gary is covered in blood telling us we're in trouble when we're at the bar and we're trying to get the book. Uh, you've gotten the book, I think, at this point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we would try to figure out what's, what's what with Gary. Yeah, Gary, what's up? <laughs> I think that's your two's instinct. I think Hyacinth <laughs> is going to just go bounding out the door. <laughs> that Gary just went into. I'm, I'm sorry. No, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there's a there's a trail of blood leading from the uh, Monkey Point Museum to uh, this door here. As the like more doctory type, I'm I'm concerned about whether it's Gary's blood or someone else's blood you do have a medical bag i do have a medical bag so i'm gonna whip that medical bag out uh why don't, why don't we do uh let's do a uh meddling roll for that just to kick okay. right off gary metal, metal, metal. is metal, that metal, metal, metal. 
<laughs> metal, metal, metal. Gary, while I, I hope that is paint, but it, if it is not, is that blood your blood or someone else's blood? Let's find out. Uh, let's do a metal <laughs> roll with reason. And since you're using your uh, medical bag, it is with advantage. So three dice top two. So it's plus... just random whether Gary's hurt. We're just going to treat Gary this way. Yeah. After all he's done. Okay. Gary knew what he was getting into. He, when he knew it. All right. So uh, I'm rolling two. Three and taking the top two. Three. Sorry. Three, I'm three. remembering how to play the game. <laughs> it's been a little while. I have to be reminded of everything. Oh, doggy. Uh, I rolled uh, a, an 11. Yeah. An 11. So that's 11 a perf three, perfect roll for us because we do not want more void clues. <laughs> Is that 11 plus three or 11 with the plus three? Uh, 11 plus three. Oh, no. So, so 14. Oh. No. No. I rolled no. a three. No. Or 12. Okay, I rolled a 11. three, a five, and a six. A three, a five, and a th yep, that is that is 11 plus three, which is 14. All right, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Um, <laughs> so. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, it is it is not Gary's blood. Uh, okay, that's all you, I want. You can, you can see that he is he is not not Gary's blood. Um, <laughs> um, you can uh, see uh, upon a cursory inspection that he is uh, largely unharmed but uh, extremely shaken. And uh, as you inspect him, you uh, realize that he is holding the shotgun that he took from the police car. Uh, to go make sure things were okay uh, and it is uh, <laughs> dramatically uh, smoking as if he had just fired it so uh, things are not okay no she I, I, I was it, everything happened too fast I went to went to get her and she I don't know it felt like she moved too fast and the gun just went off and uh, and Hyacinth, uh, you uh, like sort of visually following the trail of blood back to the uh, Mucky Point Lighthouse Museum. This see, is not a smart thing for us. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably Go chasing after the she, blood. She's probably <laughs> chasing after Akiko, who was who was <laughs> who following. chasing after the blood. Yeah, lick, lapping lick, up lick. the blood on the way. Or they, they both uh, have their own motivations for going yes. on this path. Uh, Eleanor is standing uh, outside the front of the museum. Uh, mm. You can see the closed sign in the window through the giant hole in her chest. Oh. And she begins okay. walking towards you. Oh. Mm. OK. What would you like <laughs> to do? <laughs> I believe shit has hit the proverbial fan. Gary is right. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to figure out what what Hyacinth does in this scenario. <laughs> Goes um, into sleeper killer mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure she's encountered strange things before, and it's not fear. Yeah, I I could imagine a very sort of efficient. Okay, we're turning around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, not this one yeah. again. Like, yeah, because she doesn't have a moment of, has this person received a mortal wound and is she somehow still standing? It's like, this is not her first rodeo for this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Nope, undead. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Moving quickly, but carefully. Always <laughs> messy business. Speed, but this not haste. Shit backwards. Ain't right. Before. And Gary is uh, shaken beyond the point of being able to explain properly. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm tempted to want to try to take the gun from Gary. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely. Even do that though I his... know he probably just shot someone, and then now my <laughs> fingerprints are going to be on it. Um, we have bigger fish to fry than we're. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, maybe I'm grabbing it with like a cloth on my hand as well, just to be like, just in case you just shit, Gary. <laughs> Yeah, you can do that easily. He is not in any okay. state to resist. I'm just gonna gently get it from him so he doesn't I would like actually to, shoot. To do my best to calm Gary, kind of try to bring Gary back around. Is that Gary? Gary. Now look. Yeah. Yeah. This is you were made for this, Gary. This is I your was... time to shine. This is our what? time to shine. Okay. This is now. But she's still. It, you know. You know what? 
we're prepared for the un for the for the un unbelievable. No, no, you don't you don't understand. She came after me. She should have. There's. Well, I understand, there's a, Gary, which is why we all need to have our seen wits her. about us more than ever, right now. Uh, Hyacinth, uh, Eleanor is still walking towards you, and she is uh, looks upset. While I'm walking back where I came from, she's yeah following. <laughs> yes. Oh, I don't like that. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Is there anything creative she can do at this point? Because, I mean, again, it feels like the logical thing is to just keep going where I'm going. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> this might be fun. Yeah. Um, so while she's quickly walking, she extracts her phone and dials Rue. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Who's been, who's known to answer my phone. Yes. <laughs> Pretty reliably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't answer mine just in case there's a voicemail. <laughs> oh, that's right. You don't get any more voicemails, do you? Oh, I miss my friend. Oh. Now that we know the GG is uh, I will absolutely answer my phone in this time of great need. <laughs> it's, I think I'm kind of surprised to see it's Hyacinth. I'm like, she was, she was just right. Hello. <laughs> where should she I, go? That can't where, be and, you should and it's that. going to be one of those things where Hyacinth tries to get all of the information out as quickly and concisely as possible, <laughs> but it just sounds like word salad. Like, yeah. <laughs> Eleanor's undead received mortal wound walking after me. Bye. <laughs> but what? Hey, or not but, uh, uh, oh no! Is she is she speaking a shorthand again? That's um, not a good sign. Okay, hold on. Let's unpack this. I heard Eleanor received mortal wound. I'm pretty sure walking after her. Goodbye. Is there like a a thing we can grab as like weapons? I mean, we have a gun, which doesn't seem to work. I, I'm guessing. I like, are there clubs? I honestly, um, I honestly don't remember oh. if I still had my pick with me or not. <laughs> yeah. uh, there is something that we have not done yet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, you have a book. We can throw the book at Oh, is this a magic one. spell book? Are we about to be witches? I don't know. Are we about to be witches? <laughs> I, I definitely think, um, you know... I think Rue is drawn to the book for sure. I think Inez is skeptical, but skeptical is starting to be like, oh, there's too much shit that we can't explain. I don't um, like it. Yeah, if, if Rue wants to flip through the book and see Damn if right she wants to flip through the book. <laughs> yeah. What the are only we way doing? to defeat the crab people is to read about the crab people. <laughs> you know what? Like, I... Uh, let's try everything. Let's do it. I don't. Perhaps I don't understand what's happening. Will detail crab person weaknesses. <laughs> um, there, uh, yeah. So there, there's definitely uh, you know old you know s some people used to believe that blah 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 blah, uh, and there are definitely uh, ways that like fishermen used to ward off uh, you know evil beings or whatever. Uh, what does the, what does the book uh, say that you have to do to uh, keep evil away? Or put evil back down. Oh, no. Is this open to all, or? or... Uh, yeah, you first, but anyone, anyone can jump in. Um, well, it usually requires uh, ingesting a small amount of water from the sea. Ooh, okay, yeah. So you drink some water from the sea and uh, like say the words and make the hand signs and uh, <laughs> see that sends the evil off or takes care of it somehow. What are we doing? Or summons the sea spirits to do battle <laughs> with it. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> yes. Um, they will yeah. attract the price eventually. Perhaps the yeah, so, people aren't our enemies, but our allies. Ooh. Uh, so let's see, when you, when you drink seawater, 
uh, and uh, say the say the magic words. Um, the, uh, the the evil that is pursuing you uh, will be uh, put down by uh, help from the sea somehow. Oh, so this sounds like move. okay. First of all, I don't believe in this. Second of all, if it's true, that sounds like more problems. <laughs> now you have two problems. Now we have two problems. <laughs> how, how close? And one is of them the, is the ocean. How close is the roadhouse to the sea? Uh, it's a it's a sprint. You can like Eleanor's not moving fast. Um, but you can you can definitely run down there. It's you know uh, I think at this point like, across you know, down upon reading there. that, I think Rue is like a bit sort of just like not literally possessed, but mm -hmm. like that's it to the sea out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you you basically push by Hyacinth as she's coming back in <laughs> and uh, see what see Eleanor <laughs> uh, Eleanor a few you know a few hundred feet away just sort of like determinedly sort of T2 walking towards you with a big I think as I passed Hyacinth, I'd be like, to the sea! And I just oh. <laughs> towards the sea. Yeah. Wonder Woman running. The Wonder Woman running hands. <laughs> uh, I guess I, I'm, I'm still catching up to everything that's happening, but like I'm trying to, and I, and I like, and also like Gary is distressed and lost the one person who's like good at calming people down. This has been no, I'm gonna. Seconds for I know, time. right? This is, which is this has been a minute of the show so far. Um, so I'm gonna try to take out the role of calming down Gary, but do it in an Inez way of like, cool. well, it doesn't really make a lot of sense right now to be upset. Like, really, we need all of our faculties. So Gary, it like it's it's actually like a waste of energy and time if you are that upset. Reasonable, reasonable. Uh, is Hyacinth, Hyacinth going in or chasing after Rue? Oh, I think chasing after Rue. <laughs> so it's like Rue and then Hyacinth and then Akiko. So Gary, do you feel better? And then uh, Eleanor. It's, it's like a checklist that Inez has. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of like, he, he is, uh, you know, he is shaken. He's not, he's like, okay, I'm here. All right, here. follow this I light. Can see, I can see the table. I can see the fish on the wall. I can do that. I can smell the, he's like doing his he's like- doing the five things. Check in. Um, and uh, so Rue and Hyacinth are booking it down to the shoreline. Uh, and uh, Eleanor is definitely when Hyacinth uh, follows Rue. Uh, she is determinedly, determinate. She is doggedly following you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you uh, reach reach the shoreline, and she is kind of like coming down the the path by the lighthouse. What are we doing, Ru? <laughs> this book, this book has the answer. I think we'll find out shortly <laughs> if it has the answer. Uh, what does it look like when you do the ritual? Um. Well, I, I I'm I'm supposing it's going to. Uh, end in a die roll of some sort is that correct yes it will that? yeah well then this <laughs> this <hold on. laughs> in, in that idea. case well i have an idea um <laughs> so am i at the water now yeah you're at the shoreline okay. now i was like you're at the beach yeah i've got an idea now is the moment i don't know why it's an intuition she reaches in her coat pulls out that old flask that still has a bit of soldier water left in it. Oh, no. Nice. No, nice. I forgot about that. I never should have given this you thing, that. This thing has history and, and and a bit of ancient soldier water left in it. That will probably make the seawater even more powerful. And she'll scoop up some seawater into the flask. Nice. Sorry, a raccoon, a raccoon just jumped off of our house. <laughs> just like the, the one of these. Nice. <laughs> it's your garbage. <laughs> Apparently, Rue is into spell crafting now. You caused a raccoon to jump. Yeah. So it will have the power of both the sea and any military vessels that were in the sea in the area. That's right. Excellent. Um, great. So uh, let's do that. So you're rolling with advantage then, right? Uh, and and we are rolling plus sensitivity. Oh, um, plus, which finally, is I get to use it, which is a nice two. two. Yeah, two so plus roll. one for Dale Cooper. Plus one for Dale Cooper. Unless that's already factored in. Oh, that, that's already factored in, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Never mind. So let's do a roll oh, two, just... roll plus two with advantage. Oh, first God. spell, first spell. 
Oh my gosh, I'm useless now. Uh, hold on. <laughs> all my reason. Yeah, and all my composure. <laughs> Which makes, suddenly that stat makes her response to Eleanor make even more sense. Yeah. <laughs> a total of nine. A total of nine. Ooh, okay. So, Not too high. Um, the first thing we need to do is uh, oh, no. we will mark one of your crown of the void. Oh, no. Wait, what? Uh, so mark, uh, check off a shadow in the garden. Okay. Why do we do that? <laughs> uh, because we rolled a seven and nine on the occult move. Oh, gotcha. Cool, cool. Uh, oh, I guess so yeah. Check off used... my canteen, right? Oh, sorry. I just did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. So now, uh, <laughs> the real all, meddling. Uh, and and meddling. you can use this spell, uh, this uh, occult ritual uh, from, from now on. This is a, a move that you can do. What? Uh, what's, what's, what's the move called, Rue? Oh, shit. Called. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Is called. Allies. So to get a box. <laughs> so boring, but I, I keep thinking. I just came with allies from the sea. Perfect. Yeah. It's trying to be more interesting, but that's what <laughs> my brain kept saying. <laughs> uh, so when you uh, perform the allies from the sea ritual, what happens? Um, I, I, um, well, because of my uh, enhancing it with the soldier water, uh, you get a, hold on a second, let me look something up real quick before I say this. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, I just, want to, I just want to define a term I'm not sure a about. fish with a gun swims uh, out of the ocean. Uh, <laughs> that's not helpful. Anyway, uh, I then, then, um, this is Aquaman's A spell. small group of, I was going to say a platoon, but I don't have any idea. A platoon is probably way too many. But a small group of, of, of water-based forms emerge mm. from the water. A squad. Yeah. Yeah, a squad probably, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, to, uh, so. To fight for you. As uh, Eleanor, and so Eleanor is uh, within yards of you now, and you're, you're doing your, uh, you know, uh, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, ocean, <laughs> ocean bullshit. Um, uh, after after taking a swig of that water, uh, and uh, as she, you know, she uh, sort of stops uh, a, a yard or two away from you, and looks Rue right in the eye. She's like, hmm. Uh, and starts disapproval to the end coming uh, coming at you and uh, you hear you know the roar of the ocean behind you as you're doing this and <laughs> just before she gets to you uh, two uh, two sort of like uh, you know watery figures come from either side of you and they each put a hand uh, on her chest uh, preventing her and she uh, just looks amazed <laughs> and shocked at this and uh, tries to tries to fight them off, but they're made of water, so uh, you know she's like. So it's like she's G1 pushing. Them. <laughs> yeah, she's like uh, going doing that. Uh, Let's not forget this is salt water in a big open wound. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst <laughs> part. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, and they infection. they each uh, they each put one arm through the oh. wound in her chest and sort of <laughs> grab her like that. Uh, oh, I don't like it. Pick her up, and you can hear that sort of like squelching. <laughs> and uh, she's like, she's like wordlessly, uh, like ah, trying to vocalize towards you, like reaching at you. And uh, you like you instinctively duck because they're <laughs> just like dragging her over where you're standing and pulling her into the uh, pulling her into the ocean. Damn right. And you can see her like. Reaching for you as she goes further and further out. Is she doing a Hans Gruber? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only horizontally. Yeah. Horizontally towards the oh, ocean. Oh, the horizontal Gruber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another move we just added. <laughs> Finally horizontal showed up Gruber. in this game. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I'm surprised that hasn't happened before. <laughs> yeah, you you see her go under the waves <laughs> once less, and a horrified look as she grabs and disappears, uh, presumably forever. Hopefully, I'm like, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. She keeps coming back, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if the, if the gunshot couldn't kill her. 
<laughs> um, so now that you have that crown marked, uh, whenever you do a cozy vignette, uh, mm -hmm. you also have to narrate how dark entities subtly reveal themselves. Oh, interesting. Oh, good. Great. Interesting. Um, interesting cool. twist. So that was some magic you just did. <laughs> uh, uh, Hyacinth, how are you <laughs> reacting to this thing that just happened? Uh, I again i feel like this isn't the first time she's seen magic <laughs> <laughs> i think at this point she's like pick, picked up the book and his stomach through it herself <laughs> oh it's one of those books oh, no. <laughs> recipe is good this part is in latin <laughs> she's got her phone out and is taking pictures of pages of interest <laughs> Um, and texting them to Inez. I, what? <laughs> These are very comprehensible texts. <laughs> <laughs> Hyacinth just gets like sleeper cell mode of like, oh, no. oh I know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. It's the one time that is actually coming from the from te a texting app and not some <laughs> random. Wow. This really is some bizarre alternate reality. My phone is like, do you want to trust this user who is contacting you for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Create, Create new contact. contact. <laughs> Create new contact. Like, uh. <laughs> ah. um, yeah, so Eleanor is uh, one with a C now. The what end. What are doing? The end. One. <laughs> Did we solve Probably. a mystery? Yes, we yes. did. Yes. Um, we should get back to Gary in the pub. The uh, loaded we shotgun were... abandon is actually uh, a clue that you got from that meddling move. Ooh, you mean a, a clue. clue. And not a void clue, but a clue. No, there's a, a, a abandoned loaded shotgun? Yeah, the, the one that oh. Gary used to. Oh, so I, I had imagined I pulled like a pistol, but I pulled it. Oh, no, it was a, it was a, he was like, Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, this was a full like death becomes her. Wound. Yeah. Okay. How's it up? Yeah, so Gary and I were kind of starting to tiptoe out. What um, makes it abandoned? It's, you know, he, uh, she took it from him. By, oh. I, <laughs> I didn't know if that was like, I didn't know if that was more like where he got it from or something. He found it mm -hmm. in the museum. And we're uh, like it, starting to tiptoe issue. out. Yeah. I'm um, Elmer, Elmer fudding my way there. <laughs> oh, no. we're, we're hunting mavens. <laughs> I think uh, Inez just sort of sees uh, Rue staring out to sea and Hyacinth flipping through the book and taking pictures. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Eleanor's no nowhere to be seen, but there is a trail of blood that goes from the oh. from the museum kind of towards the roadhouse. So, and then Inez never the... saw the walking dead oh, person. Great, this. good. This will be good. Yeah, and the trail the trail of blood like ends abruptly a couple of yards from Rue, and then it, there's just like wet beach and nothing he probably walks up on rue shouting to the sea we're coming for you marion we're coming for you <laughs> <laughs> what what in the world happened here well oh oh there was a water spell <laughs> oh and then she's flipping back through <laughs> i did i did i did i did magic and water people took eleanor into the sea Eleanor had been, you got my message, right? <laughs> I told her about the message. Yeah, yeah. I understand all of the words that are being said, but <laughs> God, it, we, we've all been very stressed and we didn't get a, we've not slept in bed, in our own beds in a really long time. And Woo! I just wonder <laughs> if the stress of it is getting to us. With water spells and walking no, dead. And... But, but Inez, it's important. We, this is repeatable. We can summon water people. They'll help us. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't a one off. Like, now we know how to do it. Oh. Water people. Hyacinth has borrowed the flask and is getting more seawater into it. <laughs> Good play. Uh, okay, that's a that's a good <laughs> that'll be that'll come in handy. Uh, if so, any final confrontations we have, we should probably make sure they're by the sea. 
Or you have a canteen of seawater. So that, that so we, I like the part oh. where we live in the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't, uh, I'm still catching up. I'll catch up. Uh, <laughs> this, and I know this isn't able to take. It's just like I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for all of this. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes very strange things can be quite explained. Just takes nice. a while for the penny to drop. Early. Yeah, mold <laughs> mold can cause massive witch hunts and. Um. So it is uh, still. I think it was uh, mid to late afternoon. While all this was happening, and uh, you are all gathered on the beach with a very confused and uh, crusty Gary. <laughs> hmm. oh. Well, now that she's taken care of, we should probably search the museum. Oh, I just remembered our mission. <laughs> <laughs> I have been hoping this whole time it would come back to me. <laughs> we have to stop Marianne. Yeah, we have to. Oh, okay. we're supposed to find out the time and the place uh, and the means. Yeah, and the method. Time, place, and means, method. and method. Okay. Yeah. So now okay. that Eleanor's out of the way, we sh we should have free run of the light of the museum to search. Well, yeah. could, but couldn't Eleanor have helped us find out? So I don't. She was uh, coming after us. Okay, first remember, remember she sh shot people. She's working with with the. Why well, can't I remember the name of the people? The midwives. Midwives. Thank you. I keep wanting to say mavens. I'm like, no, that's oh, us. The fragrant void. The mavens of the us. fragrant void. That's us. And um, <laughs> when we just encountered her, she had in her entire chest blown out, and was still coming at us. So that's not natural. Yeah, and Inez didn't see that, so yeah, sounds, I know we're telling her though. It sounds crazy. <laughs> like she had a no, big hole in her chest. See, oh. I just didn't saw it. Mm. Burn dishes and everything. <gasps> the water people carried her out by the hole in her chest. It was kind of gross, but kind of cool. Well, if the uh, I, no, I'm not going. Okay, well let's let's figure out when this time and place of this magical creature are going to show up, and then. And then we'll figure out what is behind all of this, and it'll make sense. And well, that's why, since I think she's our only connection to the midwives, the museum mm. could hold answers. Maybe she's got hidden things. And I feel like if, if we do head off to the museum, I think the first thing Hyacinth, or the thing that Hyacinth says to Inez as we're heading over there, as we you know fade to the next scene, is. My Sam met a wizard once. <laughs> and I'm just going into the details about that. It won't count for the end of the session thing. And Inez is just kind of like stunned and is like, uh-huh. I just like, just like nodding along to the story. Oh. Um, so you're uh, back at the uh, museum, a uh, trail of blood leading from it. Uh, there's a big splash of blood in the front, uh, you know, front of the foyer because that's where the uh, incident happened. Mm -hmm. There's bits of bits of Eleanor all over as well. Oh. and the spell was so powerful, you have, you have to give up a finger to make it work. So my Sam never tried that, of course. Oh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening, Gary? <laughs> Okay. Are you better, Gary? Have you recovered? Do you feel better? We took care of Yeah, this door. is where I shot. I shot her here. There's some, oh my God, I did. Gary, we Please. shouldn't be dragging you through all this trauma. Is there a safe place we could get you? Or do you want to, or maybe it will be helpful to keep walking through the trauma to the other side. I, I can I just sit know. in the car. It's okay. Yeah. Do, we need, do we need a cozy scene with Gary to exclusively to calm him? If you'd like to, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Down. What what do you want to do to calm him down? Besides, yeah, we don't need the... to bring him back where he murdered someone. Yeah, the place where he murdered someone. <laughs> yeah, what is what is the coziest place in the immediate vicinity here in Monkey Point? What is Point? Gary love? Probably, probably the cop car. Aww. <laughs> cozy cop car. Cozy cop car. He's like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit. 
I listen to the radio. I listen to the radio. We put we put all the space blankets around him. <laughs> Cozy cop car by Dick Wolf. Cozy cop car. <laughs> Somehow Hyacinth has found a cup of tea. <laughs> I got like a, so- a soothing podcast on. <laughs> First, it's Levar a podcast Bur- that turns Levar out to be Burton like- reads. <laughs> oh, it's like it's like a murder. It's like a yeah. murder. First, it's a murder one, and then it's Levar Burton. Yeah. I think it was trying to be comforting, but I'm not sure it works or not because you know she's saying things like. Gary, you don't have to worry. Eleanor was dragged into the sea by the water people, and they're going to help us for now. <laughs> oh no! Okay. So um, she's gone. You don't. She's not after you anymore. You're safe. Okay. Okay. This tea is good. Our <laughs> curtain's good. I'm Gary, gonna... do the do the counting thing you did earlier. Okay. That seemed to help. I see the dashboard. I see the steering <laughs> wheel. I see... <laughs> Two, three. I like that thing. I'm going to have to borrow that. I remember, <laughs> Gary, when my Sam was briefly, briefly abducted by beings that may not have been from Earth, it was just a few days, but he was very upset. And he told me that he didn't really know if anything was real anymore, just because of oh. what he'd seen. Oh, I hadn't considered that. <laughs> oh. And what I Maybe told it's... him... What I told him is that what is real, no matter what, is that your friends care about you and that your friends are here for you. Oh, that's you guys. That's us in this case. In that case, it was me and one of the kids. I hadn't had the other one and several law enforcement officers, but we were there for him. Have more. Tea. Okay. All right. I mean, the tea's probably like a thermos. Yeah, a thermos <laughs> of tea. A little, a little good. Like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here and relax whenever. Oh uh, yeah, when whenever, do what you need to do, and I'll be here. She's I'll be here when your person finds a small oh. cookie and sets. Oh, good to cookies the and some blood sugar. <laughs> All <laughs> right, <laughs> Gary. Whew, okay. We'll be back when we're done. Small cookie. In- All right. Investigating. <laughs> Ooh, I want a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everyone is eating cookies. <laughs> get a cookie. I had a bunch of cookies before the game, so mm. I've already they're in my belly. Mm. <laughs> I guess right. cookies came. So. Meanwhile, LeVar Burton is reading a LeVar Burton. soothing story about. <laughs> uh, you have the run of the town pretty much. What would you like to well, do? Well, I, I want to check out that museum. Now. And I feel like Inez is just going to try to look look logically for clues so maybe i'm like digging through any notebooks that are in the museum yeah oh. looking for oh. diary entries or oh yeah yeah let's roll i'm also a... like it's it's kind of, for inez it is also like looking for dirt on her yeah <laughs> like my favorite <laughs> my favorite thing to do is to snoop and i'm 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 kind of also gripping onto this as like a okay this is a thing i know i'm good at <laughs> I think Rue now like doesn't let go of that flask. Like she's carrying, like she was carrying the pick. Now she's oh, like, yeah. oh, we're safe. <laughs> we're, we... yeah. um, I think uh, poking uh, through the front office is going to be meddling reason again. So yeah, that, that's my shit. That's Another boy clue. Oh, no, oh wait, no, no, no. Maybe I shouldn't <laughs> be doing things with reason. That is this level of my shit, not. Oh wait, <laughs> no, Le- less of my shit. <laughs> Uh, but that probably mm-hmm. is what I'm doing. So, so that's okay. Well, sensitivity is one of my highest, and I still only got a nine. So there's hope. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll roll low. Is this, uh, so I'm meddling with reason. Yeah, just two dice. With reason. All right, there we go. I rolled a six plus three is a nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, great. Better. That's that is uh, something with a complication. Um, uh-oh. So yeah, you are. Um, I, I, I think poking through this uh, this front office, like this is this is the the play the scene of the the grossness, uh, and I think you are uh, kind of um, oozy from grossness <laughs> uh, after like digging through. Like oh, I'm digging through these papers, and here's some bone. Okay, uh, here's some grizzle from this. <laughs> and uh woozy from grossness woozy from grossness um but you that's the do, technical term yeah um i had a good one for you where is it here um 
do, 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 do. There it is. Oh yeah. Um, you find a handwritten letter, uh, well, single page letter, uh, and it looks uh, it, it looks old. It's like kind of like pressed in the pages of one of the you know sort of like uh, tour guides that are stacked behind the desk. Uh, as and it's a it's in a, a woman's hand, and you look down at the bottom, and it is. Uh, signed by Eleanor. Uh, the date uh, puts it uh, about like a little over 10 years ago. Um, and as you read through it, uh, you see that it is actually a suicide note written by Eleanor. Oh, where am I? Uh, saying that, uh, basically uh, intimating that uh, someone that she was involved with or cared about was gone or unavailable and life is not worth living and uh, she would uh, dispose of herself uh, by walking into the ocean. Oh, so I guess she got what she wanted. Oh. That's so sad. I did not like her, but no one deserves that. To lose someone you love, that's... Well, just as she was under the power of the mask, I mean, we may not have ever known the true Eleanor. We may have only known, like, midwife-influenced Eleanor. Yeah, the only other stories I heard of Eleanor through Vera were all pretty normal. Seemed like she had a good heart. That I mean, in fact, that's why Vera didn't work well with her. Vera needed someone she could just what we would call creative friction. And there's her good heart on the wall right there. <laughs> Where are we? We're just like in the office of the museum or yeah, just in the front office. Um Judging from what you have seen of Eleanor and thinking about what her relative age might look like, uh, it's possible that she actually did successfully carry out her plan 10 years ago. Oh, and sort of froze at that age. Tried to kill herself and perhaps was co-opted by hmm. Oh, no. Something. I, I didn't put that together. Oh, yeah, that's what I figured that was. She did seem quite young. For so the true Eleanor for her age. probably for died age. 10 years ago. So was that a clone or, or a robot or a <laughs> robot? Or <laughs> I like that Hyacinth has all these very, <laughs> oh, I've seen all these things before. Astral projection, maybe. <laughs> Mass drug-induced hypnosis. <laughs> I've heard of stories of people coming in and impersonating people. Maybe it was people? someone different. <laughs> you mean like a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> Who knows the ways of the midwives? Hmm. Good question. Probably like a like a criminal criminal ways. So they seem more of a supernatural bent than like a robot constructing bent. So we're thinking ghost, phantasm, ectoplasm sort of thing. <laughs> or maybe some kind of like voodoo possession. Ooh, good call. Type thing. Or like a, a just like, Which a, I mean, like a con artist. If we had the body, we could run some little, we could just draw like some simple shapes around it and summon some, well, ah, neither here nor there. I might be able to get the water people to bring her back. Probably there's not a also, good idea, There's also bits and pieces, uh, literally. Oh, around. okay, yeah. <laughs> there might be something Akiko, in the book. I need you to gather up as many pieces as you can <laughs> into this pile here. Akiko, well, the body gathering ourselves. cat. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. We need that <laughs> later. After we're done, you can eat as much of it as you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. What do y'all do next? 
I mean, I definitely think we need to thoroughly explore the museum. There's go to therapy. Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any open therapists in Monkey Point? Yeah. Just like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, can I? Uh, oof. Could I use one of the crowns of the void to try and let's see from from the bits of of Eleanor that are there determine what kind of thing she was? Yeah. Um, do you want or, to? But does that is that something I want to do? <laughs> um, so there's two there's two options or three maybe. Yeah. Um, so it, you could pitch it as a meddling move. Um, sort of like uh, examining the entrails to see, to see what's going on. Yeah, uh, you you could uh, pitch it as uh, some some sort of ritual or something that she remembers from her adventuring days. Adventuring days. Um, or worst case, we could probably just do a day move and see what happens. And then, what is the worst case for a day day move? Worst case for a day move is that just like uh, something bad happens. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, what, what you are afraid of happens. Oh, okay. And not the, it's even worse case for the night yeah. moves. Uh... What's the worst <sighs> that can happen? We succeed. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I, I feel, I'm one, I feel kind of reluctant to burn another crown of the void for something this small you got um, yeah and I, but at the same time i don't want to sit on all these uh, i'm in maxing i guess <laughs> save yeah. all the healing potions till the end i don't know that we need everything <laughs> well again i don't know it's min maxing as much as just trying to use the game mechanics to drive some kind of action yeah because it's always kind of a little more interesting to have an action driven by a game mechanic than just be like Okay. You know, yeah. so it's, it's giving you reason to do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here's something I'm thinking. Um, the chariot is a ceremony that takes some physical thing and gives you a vision of what that was going through backwards in time. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of dumb, but... Um, Love it. But I, I, I think that could be fun for later use. And I, I, I have a sensitivity of minus one, so I doubt it would work. <laughs> Even better. For me. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, so I, I'm. how do we feel about my using, or Hyacinth using the chariot to go back to the moment of, of um, of Eleanor's suicide. Uh, what what does it look like when you do that? Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, and the uh, the void crown moves they're always uh, they're always marked off from top down. So oh, so I can't really use the chariot here. Well, you, we can still make that rule you know work however you want. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Oh man, I got such writer's block at this point. Let's see. So yours was to drink some seawater, right? And then gesture towards yeah. the sea. Um, yeah, so this one, I guess we'll make the chariot air-based instead. Like okay. we need to find a, a little stand, stand fan that we find in, somewhere in the office to get air whipping past us. Um, and there's an object that yours would, but he's. I think he's saying yours would have to be shadow in the garden now, right? Since he haven't. Well, the 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 crown that's marked off is unrelated to the the spell that you do. The spell. It's just oh, you have okay. this many spells, right? And they just happen to be next to the list of names. Is how I'm reading it. Um. So the the crowns of the void. Uh, those are basically if you uh if you don't roll a strong hit on the spell. So if you roll a 10 plus on the spell, uh, oh, it just okay. it just works and you're okay. you're good. Yeah. Do okay. you have a a playbook that you could share 
Yeah. Um, I, I was just like, what? We have magic spells? <laughs> Uh, let's see. There's the we find out on Dropbox. I think. I mean, that Inez will probably be. <laughs> Inez will probably be a little slower to to try hers out, but. <laughs> oh, it's actually on. No, that's the main moves there. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Magic missile! I can catch it on fire now. <laughs> oh, you have so, a spell book, so. <laughs> so theoretically, if if Keith could cast spells with advantage and plus three, he can just like keep doing them without. <laughs> I'm also noticing oh. that like once you get the chariot, your reason modifier lowers and your sensitivity modifier goes up. Like this That's is gonna true. change some shit. Oh, okay. But the first one is just Yeah, the first one's more like, oh your your scene's a little bit creepier. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that last one is <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's that's oh. the timer on the game there. Oh, um, cool. okay. So here, huh. here is the uh list of here's the reference sheets thank you sorry about that i was like i don't <laughs> i had been playing a very small part of this game yeah. <laughs> there's not there's not too many there's like half a dozen moves right seven yeah so yeah basically to to kick off the occult move uh we describe what the ritual is uh and sort of justify it and then roll to see what happens oh okay so we can have any number of spells i guess or... oh yeah yeah but, uh, yeah, and, and the, the the sort of limiting or danger of that is if you roll, you know, a nine or lower, you check off a crown of the void, which uh, each person can check off up to um, five five times, and on your fifth time, uh, the void takes you. So. Oh my! That seems so basically fine. On, on the on the fifth failure. Yeah, on, on the fifth, not strong hit. Right. And does okay. So, and if I rolled like a three on the spell, it just uh, wouldn't then, do anything, and yeah, I would the, get a check as well. Yeah. So then that that spell is not uh, something that you can do uh, ever. Okay. Uh, and then you mark it, and something bad happens. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay. So from a gaming angle, this or from tactically this is not a good thing for me to do but it seems fun though do it <laughs> okay so we have the fans set up. you can get more uh, more a little more conservative if you start running out of crowns yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> i will revive you sounds like we can bring people back from the dead she's got a medical bag um we'll just create a spell to undo the crowns <laughs> well if i die then i'm just going to role play as a kiko for the rest of the game <laughs> oh there. Akiko, what would Hyacinth do? <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, yeah. So what does the ritual look like? Um, right, so we have the fan set up. I think she's just sprinkling sand into the flow of the air, and then with the other hand doing Doctor Strange sorts of well, no, let's say that this one looks more like <laughs> Aikido or something or Tai Chi. Is, is she is she using uh, bits of Eleanor in the spell to I think I think it's all sort of centered around the pile of Eleanor that is <laughs> that Akiko has gathered up. I feel like awesome. Rue is just like watching and kind of supervising, like, yeah, it's good. Mm, that, that's good. <laughs> yeah. that makes sense. She's yeah. like an ex sense, expert yes. now that she's read this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's doing magic. As she speaks, as she intones in the ancient language, um, I think everyone starts to see kind of flashes of light around the edge of their vision and like nice. the world in front of them disappearing in floaties and then uh. it fades into <laughs> um, whatever vision this might give us, which is probably not going to work. So I'm rolling two dice and subtracting one and hoping <laughs> yeah. for, okay, oh, boy. this is gonna be trash. Uh, if, you, if you can work in a Kiko, you can roll with advantage, but I don't know if you wanna do that. Um, well, I mean, Akiko fine. helped gather all the stuff, but... Uh, yeah, that's true, yeah. And that is a three, so that's a seven. I'll re-roll this guy. Oh, oh that's oh, a nine. Oh, oh. Wow! Cool. Nice. Okay. Seven and nine both work. You did as good as now I we did. we can tell the future! I was going to say, I have a plus <laughs> two sensitivity, and you just did as good as me. Oh, but I need to... <laughs> Nine doesn't get me. I have to check one of the boxes. Right? Yeah, so you, you'll mark the first one off there, Shadow okay. in the Garden. Welcome. Um, welcome. Welcome to, to your garden. first Void Crown. Um, what is this spill, spell called? Oh, I was going to call it the Chariot, but I guess... Yeah, um, Chariot's great. Yeah. 
carry it. Uh, and so when you uh, have wind, sprinkle sand, and have something that connects you to a uh, person or location, uh, you can see uh, the moment of uh, a significant moment from that point, right? Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds right. Uh, and so what were you intending to look at there? Um, the exact circumstances surrounding her original death and how yeah. she was revived from it. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. So uh, it's sort of uh, the, the sand sort of whips into uh, sort of a, a, a small uh, volume that is oh, okay. being sort of and the uh, the grody bits of Eleanor around kind of float up into that volume. Oh. And so you've got like a sort of like a, a Star Wars resolution uh, hologram thing <laughs> where the where the yeah, uh, yeah. The, me the medium is the floating sand and the visuals are being uh, displayed with the bits of blood and no. gore sort of twisting into different shapes and stuff. Uh, and are you can we see all are we all seeing this? Sorry. I think so. Yeah, yeah. This oh, is just a no. like <laughs> Sandy Gross I'm vision. Sorry, America. <laughs> uh, and in this sort of uh, this, this hologram of blood and sand, uh, you see uh, the, the the room that you're in. Hemogram uh, and uh, hemogram. Yeah. <laughs> and, this episode uh, for mature audiences only. <laughs> Eleanor uh, finishing writing a letter, sort of stealing herself. And uh, putting putting the letter in a book, putting it on the on the shelf, and she like pulls on a, a little jacket. Uh, looks to be about the same time of year, uh, January or so. And walking out, and the camera of the hemogram follows her down to the sea. And there are you know a couple people walking around. You can tell it is uh, of 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 a uh, ten year ago vintage. <laughs> There's a newspaper uh, and, on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> a newspaper blows by, and like, whoo, there it is. Okay, great. There's a certain movie on the marquee of the non People are walking, talking point. about Lost as they walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she uh, walks down to this, the, the uh, walks past the uh, shack of the lighthouse where, mm. um, uh, where, what's his name? Um, Cyrus uh, presumably uh, is living at this point and kind of walks past the uh, the door and puts her hand on the door, uh, stays there for a minute and drops it and walks away and then walks down the path to the beach uh, right about where Rue had her dragged mm -hmm. in and she just oh. walks, walks into the sea and vanishes. Um, and the the, the uh, blood just sort of it is basically like all blood, no sand, and uh, it zaps back to the image is staticky. Yeah, the um, to a, a boat That's on the on the water with a uh, hook and a lantern, and a figure in a cloak, and which is clearly a uh, wooden mask on it. And oh, clearly, the figure, in, the, in this, clearly as, as clear as possible in the bloody sandy thing, uh, and the figure takes a, a long hook, sort of like a boating hook, and you can see her or them uh, pulling something into the boat, and it is the body of Eleanor, and the camera sort of pulls back to the circle of circle of boats in the light, and there's no audio here, but you can sort of imagine them. Uh, they would be chanting at this point. Yeah. And uh, the camera comes back to Eleanor's sort of like bloated and distended face. Uh, she'd been in the water for quite some time and uh, stays there for a little bit too long. And then she coughs up water. So seawater comes out of her mouth and her eyes open. She looks terrified uh, and uh, looks up the figure. And the figure uh, reaches down and puts a wooden mask on her face. And all the sand falls to the floor. Uh, Necromancy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'm disappointed, but not entirely surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Inez, what, uh, what, what's your impression of all this that's happening? <laughs> well, I'm woozy from blood grossness. He <laughs> sure and are. This didn't help with that. And had been in denial about any supernatural stuff and now have seen this. So now I'm I think like... I think it was like, very, very interesting, Hyden. It's real. I'm so interested to see what magic Inez will do. 
<laughs> yeah, we both turned to Inez. I think Inez is like, okay, so is doing like if then is like all right if magic is real then yes then let's okay turn to a random page in that book let's <laughs> let me show you that it's not real this is all just us being stressed out oh, no. <laughs> so, so you're basically hate casting i'm gonna hate cast i'm gonna spite cast some shit <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a good reason except to prove that this isn't real. I I just think that we're stressed and we saw what we wanted to see. People see what they want to see. People are suggestible. Like, wh what page did you turn to, Rue? Uh, read, read me the spell. I'll do it. 47. Okay. Ah. Uh, I'll grab it from you. Oh, this is a... Ah. <laughs> Sorry, my brain isn't quite working. So Maybe you could cast leaving. something to like lead us to something here that will help us find the midwives. Yeah, yeah, like a wayfinding spell. That's, Ooh. well, we got a, oh. this one has like a little compass on it. So it looks like if you take uh, something like, that looks like a wand that, she's holding but i'm gonna use this pencil so this uh <laughs> see this like uh monkey point pencil that's got the little droopy droop let's put this on the table the little looks lighthouse like, that turns on and off little lighthouse. <laughs> uh looks like if you then oh you have to charge one of the points with energy makes oh. sense no what that's pretty standard i think i feel i feel like that's a pretty standard move yeah Okay, you charge it with energy, and that energy has to be intention of what you want to look for. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to find the midwives, right? And we want to find a clue about the midwife. We want to find out about Marianne. Uh, do we have do we have any like material that would connect to what we want? Mm -hmm that's maybe not the blood that's all around us? Or am I just gonna have to put some of the blood on here? Do we have anything of the like skeleton that turned to dust or anything like that? I mean, uh, you can search would, the museum. There's... It was buried down in the beach. Oh, right, yeah. So uh, it is really, accessible. She has something around the museum that's midwife related, right? Is the handle from the U-boat still there? What if I wrap it in the suicide note? Okay, I'm gonna wrap it in the suicide note, and then uh, apparently, if we infuse it with energy, it'll act like a divining rod, and it'll show us the direction of the next thing we want to know. And you know what? Then I'll do magic too, and then we could just magic our way all the way to solving the problem. And or we'll all see that we're just seeing what we want to see. Sounds legit. You're doing very right. well. <laughs> Let's roll plus sensitivity. Oh, I have to roll. I was grumpy magicking. Uh, <laughs> my sensitivity hate is hate magic time. I'm ro I have zero, so that's why. Inez has discovered the new school of hate magic. New school of hate magic, and I have rolled a seven. Ooh. Power comes from her boundless spite. <laughs> See, it's uh, not so going to work. It's not going to move. Off your, mark off your first crown there. Hey, welcome to the crown club. Oh, God. We're, We're just all closer to the void. Uh, what's, the, what's the name of this spell? I just hate void. I just hated myself towards the grave. <laughs> that that sounds like how I'm gonna go. This spell is called the Wayfinder. Wayfinder. Yeah, you build a you build a compass out of out of your energy and it's uh, called what, void what segue. Seeking. I'm kidding. It's not void called. segue. <laughs> not called. <Please. laughs> That's our chariot. <laughs> the chariot. So is how are you? Uh, how are you holding the pencil? It's like one of those little dippy birds. <laughs> on your finger, kind of like on your finger, like. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, as you as you do that, the pencil starts to move. No. It could just be like an air current pushing it because it's yeah. balanced pretty well. Um, but then it starts to move faster and starts spinning around. Oh no! Uh, and it actually lifts off your finger. Ooh, nice! Uh, so it's like this little spinning pencil. Uh, uh. And then, it, <laughs> uh, then it stops, 
and uh, points uh, back into the uh, the bulk of the museum, uh, back to the wall, and just sort of shoots and it shoots through a wall uh, ah! and disappears. Okay. Um, Note okay. to self: Do not get in the way of the wayfinder, but that's gonna be hard because we don't know which way the wayfinder is gonna go. No wayfinding with knives. So hold it above your head, and everyone. Good talks. call. Good call. <laughs> okay. I. You know what? That was weird. Um, Let's go find out where it went. <laughs> she, Hyacinth is already puttering towards. Yeah, the you're right. The most logical thing I can do is actually assume that this is. Somehow real. <laughs> Let's go. Let's find it. Follow it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just hate magic. <laughs> Um, as you go into the museum proper, uh, you can kind of follow a, uh, a small <laughs> awake of mild destruction. There's a couple shattered <laughs> cabinets, and uh, the you find the pencil lodged in the display case where the uh, handle from the submarine used to be. Mm. Oh. oh, I need this back. Uh, and it is no longer there. But I needed to get my um, speculum. <laughs> yeah, and the speculum there. I got my speculum back. <laughs> um, and it is actually, um, at least I have something good. Is it that me. we need to talk to new Etienne? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Or actually, I guess it would be old. Which one's new? Oh, yeah. Is it new Etienne it's, or is it old new, Etienne? New to us. Yeah. Like a used <laughs> car of Etienne's. Um, this is where Spanish makes things unambiguous. I'm actually getting a clue here. Um, beep, 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 beep. Uh, the... Mark has to tell us really clearly. Please yeah. ignore Because otherwise, we will not. <laughs> the, uh, the pencil has embedded itself uh, in the display, and it, it has actually embedded itself in one of the little uh, description plaques uh, by it. And it sort of describes the, like, this was part of a uh, a German U-boat that had, you know, uh, washed up in 1942, and uh, it is, you know, just sort of saying like, oh, it was, you know, torn apart and blah blah blah. Uh, but the pencil is uh, pointed, uh, is stuck right below uh, the uh, latitude and longitude where this piece was found uh, in the ocean. Oh no! And it is uh, a clue. with a quick uh, Google mapping you can see that it is uh, just a ways out from <clears throat> the shore in Brindlewood, um, about where the Krause's ship was moored when you went to look at them back then. <laughs> this could be the location of the final ritual. We were looking for a location, yeah. So then we just need to find the time and the means. Let's go find that boat friend guy. I forgot his name. Boat friend. <laughs> Uh, Thurgood. Thurgood. He's got a boat. Gary has a boat too, but Gary is a little shaken. <laughs> Can uh, we do a quick cut to Gary at this point? Yeah. Oh. Gary's just, I think there's like a it's like a theme song going on the podcast that he's got like singing along. It's like the it's like the third episode he listened to. He's like <laughs> singing along with the theme song. Great, okay, okay, okay. things are okay. Take us go on the tea. Okay. For some reason I thought he was going to be listening to Yacht Rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, Poor Gary, we need to watch out for his mental health. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to do next? Sounds like we have a location we could, we could check out. But we still need a time and a means. Oh. Mm. Um, what yeah, whatever, right. whatever happened to uh, <laughs> who was the lady in Brindlewood who tried to warn us who was in the morgue all that uh, the one who oh Melanie is buried the shore that's right, right now I was trying to remember what that happened or was like, that person that's right <laughs> yeah that's let's go right. ahead, let's go okay well I mean never mind that's what happened to her Spells. <laughs> what if everyone in Monkey Point's dead? <laughs> Did I date and marry? Was I dead? 
<laughs> Is that why their faces are so cute? <laughs> Uh, and as is having some some little breaking down existential crises <laughs> i am real. wondering if if for story reasons there might be some commune with the dead or um with the spirit world spell in the book um for later use yeah i'm not ready to make I mean, there again it would make sense mm. Um, let's we see. all get well, familiars well, and it's our exes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Vera, don't go over there. Stop it. Stop it, Vera. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roger has lost some of his panache. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Well, we. There are places we can look for clues, right? And there are- who, Never been who, to the convenience store. True. <laughs> we, or met the met, dog. I was about to say, we've never met the dog mayor, right? Maybe the mayor knows what's going on. <laughs> Maybe we could cast a spell to communicate with animals. <laughs> oh, I don't know what a, I don't know if I want to know what Akiko is always thinking. <laughs> Just murder. <laughs> Only murder. The dog mayor could have all the answers. <laughs> mm. There is the um, the bakery, the Sweet Sensations Bakery building. Aww. The, the bankery. The bankery. Yeah, the bankery. <laughs> um, okay. That she was in. <clears throat> um, I forget. Could. The more what are the logistics if we did a cozy scene at this point? Um, you would uh, do a cozy scene. Uh, and if you uh, have an intimate moment with another, another maven while one of you is engaged in your cozy activity, uh, you basically <laughs> both clear a condition and you can grab a clue. I would not mind clearing a condition. Yeah, you're kind of in bad shape, aren't you? Got some problems. Well, let's see. What are our respective activities? Gardening and I, I do bird watching. I kind of love the notion of abandoning the plot for a second. <laughs> well, we've had a pretty intense, uh, pretty intense little bout of time here. Yeah, you can go back to Brindlewood anytime you want. You're not stuck at Monkey Point by any. Oh, any I was, I was wondering if we like assume that the lighthouse is our point of operations from here oh is that the new and we do a little homemaking like we clean the, it's like scenes where we clean the place up like hyacinth <laughs> is gardening and rue is like bringing in new furniture she's found <laughs> i'm bird watching from the top of it like a little sweet little music plays in the background <laughs> just an offer we don't have to do that There's also going back home, yeah. We should probably get Gary settled back in anyway. Well, we could have Rue checking in with Gary as you and I go and look at <laughs> do bird watching in the area or something. Um, and my bird watching is mostly snooping anyway, so. That's true. Um, but I do like the idea of moving furniture into the lighthouse. <laughs> you know what? This place does need more beds. I'm not sleeping on the floor again. Well, it makes sense for whatever you guys decide to do. You two could have a scene doing whatever while I go check on Gary and yeah, make sure he's cool. Listen to an episode of his podcast with him. <laughs> Get him some more tea. Uh, it's probably getting towards early evening about now. Night moves. Night moves. Well, then we're going to go to bed while it's nighttime. As soon as the sun goes down. As soon as the sun goes down and then we wake up when the sun comes up. Because fuck that shit. Now we know why old people go to bed so early. They don't want to deal with night moves. Night moves. Um, yeah, so, yeah, could we try that? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Yeah, go for it. Um... I think I I think below. Inez wants to ask Hyacinth about the first time she saw magic and how, to, oh, how okay. she dealt with like that break, but that doesn't have to be where we go with it. No, that sounds that sounds interesting. Like getting advice and being like, so magic is real. 
And so the first time Hyacinth saw magic, um, yeah, she was um, playing hooky from the uh, Aldridge School for Well-Presented Girls <laughs> in, in Cape Cod. <laughs> Um, and she had, right, and so sh she and some other girls were running off to, to, go, to go to the beach, let's say, and um, night fell as, as they were driving in a jalopy. Off I, my timeline is all over the place. <laughs> I love it. Um, three, past the beach town, toward, and, and what happened? They stumble across as they're walking down the path to the beach, they um, happen on, uh, yeah, a group of uh, older women around a fire. Um, and they're just whispering intently. <laughs> and immediately Hyacinth's group is all just giggling and, oh, let's hide and watch. Um, and each of the older women puts a hand over the fire um, and just holds it there. Um, as they continue their whispering uh, and um, yeah, and then the flame changes color to a like light blue and then starts to expand out around the entire group around the, the fire and then out to a wider circle that includes um, that includes that group, their, her group as well. Um, and instantly they disappear from the forest and find themselves somewhere else. Um, I, I don't know if this is too God Mahdi, but um, but they all find themselves looking out on the shoreline and then they see the line of boats come in mm -hmm. into a circle. Um, yeah, because you're supposed to be uh, narrating uh, some dark entities revealing themselves. Oh, well, there the we go. Well. Oh, so that's, there you that's are. That's perfect, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and as that happens, a deep growling voice intones what's actually Marianne, but um, it's too too much of just a noise floor to even make that out. Um, but as as Hyacinth is telling the story now, it's like, oh, that might have been the boats that we were seeing here. And that might have been there again. Oh, that's interesting. But you were asking how I felt about it at the time. And I was, let's see. And everybody I was with was really scared, but I felt relieved because my whole life I had been living, I had been going to school at the Albridge School for Well-Presented Girls. I had been learning all the rules that a young presentable lady had to live by. And here for the first time, I was seeing that there was something more than that. I feel if I hadn't stumbled upon that, I never would have left America. I never would have met Sam. I never would have gone on adventures. I would have just found a eligible young man and moved out to Hyannis and that would have been that. I think magic was the thing that told me that I, that there were things I could still do, that the doors weren't all closing. It makes a lot of sense if you, since you put it that way. I think I've always tried to play by the rules of of life and just learn the rules and if I could play them well enough, be respectable enough, gamify them, then I could I could I could succeed. But that's that's not ever actually brought me the happiness. I can see the the wildness, the magic. I could see why that would be so powerful. You could cast a spell that would give you access to every cell phone camera in town. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, why didn't I do like a like an eyes and ears one? Ooh, you the Lucius Fox spell. I yeah. should. I need to. I need to not cast spells while upset. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate cast. Uh, <laughs> no hate casting. I know. First rule of mavens. 
uh, Inez, how uh, how do um, dark entities reveal themselves in the scene from your end? So from my end? Crown. Yeah. Am I am I also sharing out, or I thought we were? I forgot how these work. I'm sorry. Uh, mm. As long as you're in that scene with with one of them, and just yeah, a, a I figured we were just gardening, and and yeah. Hyacinth is talking. About how do how do dark entities? I think for me, I'm no, I'm thinking back to academia and thinking about like as I was talking about like I, so I was always like trying to be respectable and trying to trying to be the thing and fit it and I did take that other path kind of said, that you were talking about and and, and you're right it's terrible mm -hmm. but there and there's like a darkness there that I there was always something at the edge of my sight when I was in academia something something that kept me out of actually advancing like a like an invisible wall or or, or it was more like a shadow at the edge of my vision and now that I think about it um, I think I have seen those masks before. I think we had one of those in the anthropology department. Oh. I don't know why it would have been there. Is it time to call in a favor with the anthropology department? <laughs> or maybe stay far away from them. <laughs> stay far, far away. <laughs> That would explain why I never got tenure. That and uh, I fucking hated it. Oh God. <laughs> uh, where where are you two uh, having this conversation? I thought we were gardening in front of the lighthouse, or maybe around the top of the little, little lighthouse balcony. Oh, okay. oh yeah, plant bowl, yeah. Little window plant boxes. pots. I don't know. Up to you, Heisen. Your, I, your I was thinking we were birding out in the immediate environs of the car, but. Oh, uh, well, we're gifted the magi in each other. Yeah, good <laughs> bird. I'm happy to bird as well. Um, I think, uh, Inez, you do see something uh, something dark at the edge of your vision. Mm. Uh, and when you go to look at it, uh, you're like, oh, it's oh, no, it's not. A, and you look and it's there's nothing there. But there's like every once in a while you're trying to like catch something. It's like you see something large and dark and you go to look at it and it's gone. Stupid floaties. Uh, yeah. Like Big void. void floaties. Oh no. <laughs> um great. Go ahead and mark uh mark off your conditions there. Take you have any. Yeah, I'm not woozy anymore. No more yeah, gross woozies. Blindly ignoring my needs, love, and affection. Oh <laughs> Hyacinth always Loki has that anyway. Um and let's get you um let's see. Do, do, do. Maybe one. next episode we should all just focus on our vitality. We should just go to the we just go to the gym the and pump up and beat, so yeah, beat the shit out of all the problems. Just um, be Marvel heroes. Oh no! Who can punch more punchily? <laughs> um, I like this one. Uh, so, uh, are you uh, around the around the car or by the lighthouse? Which one did you decide? Uh, I mean, is the lighthouse close to the car at this point? Um, kind of like car, car is kind of like parked like in the middle of town on the main drag, but it's not, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a five, 10 minute walk to the lighthouse. So. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. And then we can be at the lighthouse and sort of putting in window. Um, sure. I like the I, notion you, that we're starting to like. Just, this is our it, It's our <laughs> other headquarters in Mikey. Park. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so you're up on the, uh. Uh, up on the top of the lighthouse, putting window boxes up there. <laughs> um, and uh, as you do that, uh, you there's a the, the door that goes back into the lighthouse enclosure, and you hear a voice. Uh, it says, "Hey, ladies!" And when you hey, turn to look, there is a uh, child standing in the doorway. They're always creepy. Uh, mm. uh, probably like seven, uh, sort of like tussled, <laughs> dirty, um, mm. not really clear if it's a boy or a girl. No one's home. 
I'm I'm lost. Okay, Akiko, I need you to sniff that and tell me if it's a real child or not. <laughs> or a void child. Void child. <laughs> oh my. Ba, 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 ba. Lord knows I'm a void the sweetest child. Eyes. The sweetest eyes. Um, yeah, Akiko goes up and sniffs it and it sort of like reaches down and lets Akiko sniff its hand and Akiko starts purring and sort of rubbing up against his legs. Aww. Yeah, definitely void child. child. Well, we don't know that Kiko doesn't love void children. Yeah, sure. Kiko loves yeah. void children. All cats love the void. Uh. <laughs> um, let's see. So, yeah. Um, little child, where did you come from? What do you need? <laughs> um, I was sleeping in my room, and I woke up, and it was dark. And I just climbed up these stairs, and now, now I'm here. Oh, no. Boy, child. <laughs> oh. oh. Where, where, is this the lighthouse? You're at the top of the lighthouse in Mucky Point. Are you from oh. Mucky Point? Yeah, my mom's never let me go to the lighthouse before. Well, here you are now. <laughs> How, I was just sleeping in my room though. We're all having kind of a strange time of it right oh, now. No, now there's portals. Is this what's... <laughs> I'm Hyacinth. Book? What's your name? <laughs> uh, I'm Tara. Tara? Yeah. I think, wait, am I reading a name? I don't think so. Um, I say, is it a name? No, I am. It is. It. Uh, no, I'm, I'm Alice. I'm Alice. Okay, so it's not Tara. Tara has Tara's been time reversed. Traveling no, so it's, not, it's not time traveled. Yeah. <laughs> Time traveling, Tara. Baby <laughs> Gary. The <laughs> <laughs> wood babies. Fred the wood babies. The spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's Alice. Um, yeah, um, let's maybe let's try going back down the stairs and see if that puts us back in the kids' room. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you, you go all the way downstairs. Uh, and it is uh, just the, the the dark room with the black stone uh, at the bottom, as it was before. And this uh, wasn't your room, was it, Alice? No, this is where I woke up. Oh, okay. And so, can you can you take me back home? And yeah, then where, where with do Inez, you, I guess. where do you live, Alice? Uh, can you tell us about where you live, and maybe we could try yeah. to get you home. Just, just behind the at our at our house behind the uh, the golden uh, the golden nugget corral bull, the golden bill. <laughs> oh, we know where that is. Yeah, that's an easy walk, right? Yeah, yeah, let's let's walk you home and see if we can figure out how you got here. And then as, as we start walking, like, do you remember anything from when you were falling asleep? Like, were there any noises or anything? No, I, I mean, I usually don't really have, I don't really dream. I just kind of fall asleep and then wake up. My moms say that it's normal, but I feel like I'm missing out. Some people tell me about their really cool dreams and oh, I never S get that. Sandy's kiddo? <laughs> yeah, uh, Sandy, Sandy and Tara. Oh, Sandy and Tara are your parents. Our friend Rue is always telling us about her dreams. Rue has some <laughs> dreams. You wouldn't want these dreams. No. I don't think Rue sleeps very well. Um, um, and it is uh, early evening now. It's nighttime. And uh, the, uh, night Let's go to bed. The golden bowl is open. Uh, and you can see there are a couple people in there. Oh, I don't. Uh, are, are we bringing a tight point dead? Sorry, go ahead. So that was, there was the answer when you asked, is everyone in Monkey Point dead? Apparently not. <laughs> so, oh, I just meant, I meant that they were dead and then brought back. Oh, all right. So it, Tara usually works at the Golden Bowl? Yeah, right? they both work there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Are you bringing I, a child into a bar? We bring a child into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Sandy is actually behind the bar. Uh, tending stuff, and there's a there's a handful of people in there. No one mm -hmm. that you've met really or noted before. And uh, when it's you probably for the best. 
walk <laughs> walk in. Uh, she kind of like puts uh, she has uh, what her rag that she was using down and uh, runs over uh, to her. It's like, oh my god, where have you been all day? You were you were not in your room this morning, and you were we we were looking for you all morning. Uh, and Alice is just like, I, I went Alice to sleep says last that night. She will, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I woke up in the lighthouse. Uh, and she, Sandy just looks horrified. She's like, uh, A, never ever go in the lighthouse. B, you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoa. I said, so, well, <laughs> you're welcome. We found her. Or she found you... us more like. So I have spent the day down in Brindlewood, trying to get, um, trying to get um, George and my father out of jail. And the sheriff there is, uh, he sucks. <laughs> now, uh, sheriff, just sheriff, sheriff Dollar you... sucks. He, he would not even let me see them. Only we get to say that. <laughs> Tell me about hell. Um, and she kind of like leans down to, to Alice and she's like, uh, run back to the house. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll have, uh, we'll, we'll check out on you. I, I assure you that we do not, we are not associated at all with the police. <laughs> oh, that's not your, <laughs> when, that's not your friend it, out there with the- When it's convenient. When it's <laughs> oh no, we are not, we are, we like help them out every now and then, but we, we, we certainly would not be able to get Sheriff Doll Rebel to do anything for you if that's what you're asking. Is that well, what you're said, asking? He said that you accused Eleanor of murdering Cyrus and now she's nowhere to be found. Oh, well, we <laughs> saw her murder Stephen. That, that's what you say. Yep, that is what. That is what we say. say. Hey, are you say, are you calling us liars? You're in my establishment, and I'll call you whatever I like. Are you calling? Oh no. Me. Oh, a liar. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an old thing they turn on us. It's just like covering your eyes. <laughs> Did you just call me chicken? <laughs> If you're like saying both that hands on the table, oh, Eleanor <laughs> murdered that hateful old bastard, then yes, I am saying you are lying when you say that. I am not a liar. <laughs> Do you, does Inez have the spell book on her right now? <laughs> Inez is trying to figure out a way to do like uh, hate cast. Hate cast. Yeah. Um, I think the bar has got like gone quiet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you one more chance. <laughs> I guess it's just like immediately turned into an evil witch, and I don't oh, know God. why. <laughs> something very, something very deep gets triggered in Ines when she gets called a liar. <laughs> um, it's probably like a, a how she was raised thing, and it was definitely a fighting point with Vera. But like, this is a fun. Um, you have one last chance. You get your lying ass out of my bar and out of my town. Or else. Okay, or else I'll what? Just, I'll just grab the cat and we'll we'll wait outside. <laughs> Disappears. Squeaks the door shut behind her. <laughs> uh, piano player shows up. Not playing. <laughs> <laughs> playing up. He sits down and starts to start and goes oh, and just stops. <laughs> well, I know that I'm not a liar, but what makes you so sure that I am? Eleanor would never do anything like that. She's never hurt anyone in her life. Look at her. That's because she's not in her life. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, oh, it's gonna, it sounds weird when you say it out loud. <laughs> You have so much reason. I'm sure you can win her over here. <laughs> reason, reason. Logically speaking, <laughs> sounds like a meddling role with reason to me. Yeah, I, I, I am trying to get her to like tell me why she thinks 
Um, oh, why she has so much faith. Why she had why she assumes you know very well that your Ooh. uncle and your father suck. Sheriff <laughs> Dalrymple also sometimes sucks, but we <laughs> are the only ones to ever get to say that because we are the only ones who ever encounter his suckage. Why do you think they were wrongfully imprisoned? They didn't do anything. Your your uh, deputy from Brindlewood came up and started harassing them. And then when they resisted, he just took them back down there and threw them in jail and won't let anyone see them. I imagine Eleanor's down there too with him. It is kind of weird that he's not letting anybody see them now that you say that. Right? Right. So why don't you go back to Brindlewood and ask him about it? Well, and I'm... don't come back. Be a shame. Be a shame if these glasses were to break. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I then start scooting an individual glass very slowly towards the edge. <laughs> I nope, keep nope, don't, nope, nope, don't you? I know this is actually a cat as a person too. <laughs> I will fucking do this. Did you know Brenda Wood used to have a bar? Oh, she she walks back to the bar. First glass goes on the ground. <laughs> I'm uh, not kidding. She Take brings, it back. I'm not a liar. She brings a baseball bat out from behind the bar. She's like, look, I know you're an old lady and I don't want to hurt you, but you have to I still leave. have the spell book and I like open it up. Like, what? You stole our, you stole I, our book. P I please push put it, the book I back. Push, uh, there's like five glasses next to me and I push them all the <laughs> I'm not like, a liar! Please tell uh, me that you need glass shards for whatever spell is coming up. Uh, she, she pushes your chest with the end of the baseball bat and she's like trying, trying to like scoot you out. Like, get oh, out of my me. bar. Don't touch me. Shove. Don't touch shove. Don't oh. shove me. Shove. Don't sho shove. I'm, I, now I'm taking glasses off the rack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this the beer special of the day? <laughs> Never seen Inez like this before. <laughs> Are we gonna have to be a like... liar? Uh, oh, she's gotta like back you up to the, to the door. Uh, I want to try to do a spell on her. Oh. I guess it's only driven to magical <laughs> match. <laughs> what, what does it look like? Uh, it was very petty. It's really petty because I don't want to hurt her. I just oh, want no, her to. I want her to know. I want her to know she's wrong. Uh, so I, I think I want to do a spell of property destruction of some sort. <laughs> oh God! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, look. I learned today that there's some weird stuff going on. If you don't stop shoving me, and if you don't take it back that I'm a liar, you're gonna you're gonna lose this nice bar counter that you oh. that you polish every day with those beautiful arms. You're a liar and a thief because that is my book, and she tries to take it from you. Oh well, I have pictures of every single page. <laughs> And she no. just gives up the book. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, that thing smells really weird. And she goes uh, to put the back the back on the the shelf. What should I? Do? How should I do property destruction? And then we can get out of here and get out of my little grudge. <laughs> God, like some um, sort of whirlwind that shoots all the glass into the walls. Yeah, like, I think we're gonna do like a little inside tornado. And he murders <laughs> everyone. I don't want to murder anybody. <laughs> uh, what, what what do you do to trigger off the spell? Um, you know. Oh, but if it's property destruction, then it moves them through the people and just hits the property. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is a, yeah, this is a property. This is uh, anti-capitalist spell of property <laughs> destruction. I think I have to like. Um, I have. Uh, there is like another like slightly, uh, full beer glass, and you have mm -hmm. to like swirl. Or maybe you have water. to break that glass as part of the. Yeah, and, and then while swirling it, break it, and then the swirl can get bigger and bigger. Oh, right. And the wow. glass is in there. 
Uh, <laughs> let's roll plus sensitivity. See what happens. All right. Now we'll fucking see. <laughs> enjoying podcasts in the car with Gary. Oh, no. <laughs> good, good thing you didn't come in. Is it still us. Lamar Burton? Or... <laughs> uh, I rolled a seven. All right. Um, <laughs> So you are marking off your second crown of the void, the Ooh. chariot. She's now closer uh, to the void than any of us. Yeah. You're, Sorry, reduce, I kept getting mad. Reduce your reason by one and increase sensitivity by one. That makes sense considering everything that has happened. <laughs> got a um, number. Seven. So what's the name of the spell? Um, Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Don't call me a liar. Um... Yeah, it's like the the whirlpool. The whirlpool, yeah. Or the vor theme. the vortex. The vortex. Um, great. So you roll a seven, which is a partial I'm success. Sorry. Um, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is this is how it works. Um, yes, magic so is you, real. Uh, Got you her first taste the, of magic. Now she's going crazy. <laughs> smash, smash the glass on the magic ground. And start doing your uh, your vortex thing, and uh, all the <laughs> it's like little, all the all the pieces of glass uh, start coming up into a whirlwind and start uh, you know swirling around you, and uh, everyone just sort of clears out yeah, because get the fuck out. Uh, this is this is some crazy bullshit. Um, <laughs> and uh, this. all the you know all the glasses are smashing and stuff, and Tara is just standing there looking at you um and she takes the baseball bat and breaks it over her knee and when she does that all the shards of glass fall to the ground Ooh. and she says you may have stolen my book but i've had it for much longer than you have get out Ah, thanks for showing us what we wanted to see. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that went well. Unqualified success. <laughs> ah, all around success. Does anybody need a drink while we're here? I'm, I don't. I'm already I'm, out of the bar. I don't drink when I'm upset. You just cast spells. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's what happens, I guess. <laughs> hey, um, where where is Rue at this point? <laughs> she's still inside in the car outside. With she's in the, the car. car carry. Yeah. Okay. Because she didn't um, know like, the girls. She was waiting for the girls to come back. <laughs> I think the, the camera like is showing like you and Gary in the car, and then in the background like just <laughs> things exploding. Yeah. I think the... I've basically been giving Gary life oh, advice, yeah. trying to get him through this, being like, "Look, Gary, I know it's a difficult time." But here's the thing I've learned through all my trials and tribulations, such as when my husband died. You have to face your fears head on, Gary, because People the only run way from the bar. <laughs> through them, the only way over them is, is out is through. You gotta get. You're not gonna Glass avoid them. Glass shoots out of the windows. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get around them. You gotta go through it, Gary, to get out the other side. And once you're out the other side, you'll find it really wasn't so scary, and you won't. I spent this clumsily again. dragging a shouting Inez, Inez away from the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you, Gary, and I have faith in you. You're one of us. Ah, oh, I'm a maven? Of course, you're been an honorary maven forever, Gary. Ah, oh, that's real sweet. Thanks. Um, I think at this point, maybe, maybe you like Hyacinth is like knocking on the car. Oh, you're car back. Yeah, at first it's that, and then it's trying to explain everything that just happened via silent sort of dumb show. Yeah, and Inez has kind of got like crazy eyes, and is it, is it, is it quite back down yet? Are, are you like throwing Inez at the back of the cop car? <laughs> oh, God. Her sort Inez of gently is setting her there. Starting to, starting to come down and realize what just happened. It's like... <laughs> Trash to borrow with magic. All right. No regrets. No yeah, regrets. Just like the old days in Mucky Point. Just without the magic. Do you tell us what happened in there? I I'm sorry. I lost 
I lost my temper. Someone called Ines a liar. Oh God. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> what, you what know did you how do? I get how I get. My honor was Birch. called called into question. It's like that fucking tenure re- review committee. I did not. I did not fabricate data. What Those did were the you, actual story? What did you? You didn't do anything. Yeah. Gary needs to know about to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. The spell that you, she tried to cast was cut short. So. No, she tried to cast a spell. Spell. Oh, you should, you I, a spell? There's a new one we have now called the Whirlpool. Oh, a new, also, oh, a new spell in addition to all the other spells you guys know. Also, Tara yeah, is Gary. also a witch. Gary, this is right. A good Tara, thing. I was talking to. Yeah, or Sandy. Tara, what, Sandy. what did Tara yeah. do? Oh, uh, she do? broke her bat and stopped my spell. So, well, that's good to know. Game right. Also, good to know there's other witches. So, in a way, I'm not sorry because I found out some information. Well, now we definitely need to make sure we have some bats on hand. <laughs> so wait, think- so wait. You guys are witches too? Why didn't you tell me this? Oh, we, no, this is a new thing, Gary. We, we just didn't cast know. off our spells today. Yeah, we oh, really? Know. Yeah. Yeah, Gary, hey, you want to try? try one? Yeah, it's a diamond maven too. Can I cast yeah. spells? Yeah. yeah. Look, so we've okay. got this. Oh, God. She's Let's got the book. Oh, actually, I lost the book. Oh, what? Uh, what? But uh, Hyacinth took all these really lovely photos. That's just like very iris. We, we do so, document everything. Like, she's got it and like color corrected a little. That's what would you <laughs> like a spell to do, Gary? What, if you could cast a spell to do anything right now, what would you want it to do? Uh, I'm a little hungry. Well, that's like think a, a little bigger, Gary. Like a big sandwich? You, <laughs> I don't know if you want to possibly sacrifice a piece of your mind for a sandwich. Oh no, I don't want to do that. Is that Wait, what you're are, we're oh, sacrificing you're... pieces of our pipes? Well, I mean, look, I when I cast my first spell, I just I felt the darkness creep in a little bit, like I'm just a little bit closer to it than I used to be. Oh, that, that explains it. it. But oh, if it's, no. a small... it's not something I would recommend doing a lot. But if it's a small spell for a single sandwich, I'm sure it can't break <laughs> too much of the void. What back. if you made Four sandwiches, just, so that I we could can just, all have a sandwich. I could just make a sandwich. <laughs> I, I have no, no, better. No, no, there's got I to have, be a spell for this. There's no, got to be one for four sandwiches. Um, I, I mean, have, I just look, I, look. I have stuff back at my house that I can make sandwiches. Do you guys want to come over for dinner? I can equal say here. I would just like to propose um, that perhaps we save the spell casting for things th- to, to battle. The midwives, which is obviously going to be pending. Because we don't want to, like, I don't know, run. I don't know how it works, but I, don't, I wouldn't want to, like, run out of power or go, go insane, insane before, you know, the big battle with Mary. Magic always has a price. Yeah. I can just, I can just make sense. I can just favor one if you want. We can... That's probably a better idea. Yeah. Okay. I'm, That's I'm, like magic. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm la- go I just ahead. lost it in there. I feel like you guys kind like... Of, I feel like Rude looks at Inez and is like, "You, you seem like you're a little closer to the darkness." I'm just gonna get a variety. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I d- oh. I didn't know what was, I Can don't you know get what me came lemonade? over me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll get a, a lemonade for everyone. Yeah, I could probably use a lemonade. <laughs> All right. Yeah, hey. let's be more careful with the magic. Spell cast. Uh, they'll show up at my place in about an hour. I mean, that's practical like magic. That's you just pretty put much. Put something magic. in a phone and sandwiches appear. Yeah, it's on me. Don't worry about it. I, you guys have been. Oh, thanks, Gary. Uh, Gary oh, the real Gary. magic is friendship. Friendship. <laughs> friendship. <laughs> the friendship we all share. And credit cards. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's magic. It's like it's like I have no money and yet I can buy things. But it always comes at a cost. Um, oh, closer oh, to the darkness. <laughs> so since we uh, have murdered some people, I think, and trashed some bars, I'm just going to drive us home. <laughs> can, you can, you guys can come over for dinner and have sandwiches at my place and lemonade, and like we'll talk about what to do next. Does yeah, I mean, the only clue we currently Field have trip. is the location, which is near Brindlewood anyway, so it seems like a good place to start. Yeah. yeah. I could probably use a cool down. <laughs> 
You had a little bit. There's a little bit of tea left. You like slice. And I think we can all concur (laughs) at this point with Hyacinth's initial assessment of mucky point. (laughs) Ah, I get it. Fuck mucky point. Fuck mucky point. They know what Uh, they've done. (laughs) Go. I think Gary uh, drives out. Uh, and we see the <laughs> see the monkey. Welcome to Monkey Point. Uh, and I think it has a slogan of the spirit of the go sea by. written below it. Yeah, I think yeah. you see. I, yeah, and then it pans to, to the car, and you see like silhouettes through the back window, and you see like four hands. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll roll. The, we'll roll the credits there. I think it's, it's, it's ten o'clock. Uh, oh, but we have a post. There's a post credit scene of. Uh, Sandy in the bar by herself, it's sort of like she picks up a broom and just like swirls the broom around the floor, and all the glasses kind of like. Look <laughs> at Sorcerer's like, Apprentice bullshit. Fucking baby witches. And then Nick Fury walks in. Sandy does have red hair, so. Um, <laughs> Cool. Uh, end of session there. Sounds good. <laughs> learn spells. I, I didn't know I had had a temper, but she does. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's check the end of session things, if it makes any difference. I've still got it. I did one still thing. Got, you do still got it, yeah. I gave advice Shared to a wisdom. younger person. Nice. Did we undermine uh, the authority of a local official? I don't think so. I don't think we did. I think we we are the officials. But I did show people I still got it. <laughs> and I did share a memory of a late family member. So nice. I do that, and then I can clear all this. I guess I'll increase an in ability. Yay! Welcome yeah. to to all the ability town. Um. Yeah. I I'm figuring. Let's see. I was thinking I'd increase either vitality or presence. Are you going to be the big beefy uh, one? You can be although, the beefy. <laughs> can I increase sensitivity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I've done a couple of times. Let's see. That's how I got to two. <laughs> that's how I got here where I am. I'm so sensitive. Mine's increased too because I went closer to the <laughs> darkness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got two. Damn. I was pumping this uh, shit up from the beginning, preparing for this moment. Yeah, I was like, in I denial can... for a long time. Well, I guess I'll be casting. Oh, uh, I don't know. I think it would be more fun to have either vitality or presence. I'll like- pump vitality. Sweet. I assume so, he's been doing cross training, crossfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the right. next time we need two fisted action. <laughs> Cuffs. Oh, y'all learned some spells today. Uh, <laughs> I. I yeah, I think Inez is very much like what if I discovered that there was magic, I'd be like, no, there's not. No, Wait, there is. No. Let's do it all of it. It's all of it all the time, all at once. <laughs> all right. Okay. Like, Can we cool. get a, a spreadsheet page of spells? Yeah, or... I'll, I'll put that together. Yeah. Cool. Put the spell moves up. Spell, spell moves. moves. <laughs> yeah, and so now that you've done them once, those are available to all of you for the rest of the game. Wicked awesome. Yeah. Only the ones that work. Well, all of ours worked. Yeah, all We're of witches worked. now. I was kind of hoping the one in the bar would work so that it would just be like a real weird it's just embarrassment. A it's just a disaster. Just you sitting there swirling your finger angrily in a glass. You take that. Take that. Do you like it? <laughs> How do you like it? Just death in all directions. <laughs> you know what she was doing? She was just standing there staring at me, swirling her finger in a glass. It was that was strange. the last thing I saw. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to stop our stream. Boop.